the film absolutely incredible Maddie Ziegler. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for being here. I, we just smashed into each other. You did? Yeah. It's, be it's beautiful. Um, so I have a few questions I'm going to start with, but then I'm going to open it up to everyone here to ask questions so you can be starting to think of them and, and get it ready in your mind. But first, I want to start deep. You're so far away, Molly, but I'm going to give you... Do you, wanna, do you want us to scoot closer? Oh. oh, this is good. My mic fell off. Everything's going great. We were It's that. Okay, great. Now I'll scoot closer. This is going to be awesome. Okay. And then it's going to get really fun. <laughs> okay. So, Molly, I, what you have accomplished is so incredible. I think it takes so much um, effort and talent and skill to pull off such a masterpiece of a film. And separately, it takes so much talent and skill and effort to excavate something inside yourself that you feel so much shame about and make art about it and you did both and i want to give it up again for all so here's my question for you how do you go from the moment where you're like this is shameful i don't want to talk about it to now in this theater you've made a whole movie about it what happened in the middle Oh God, what didn't happen? Like I realized like last week I was doing an interview and I realized at one point in my life, this situation, me sitting here in front of all of you would be my absolute worst nightmare. Um, and not only did my nightmare come true, but I manifested it for myself, um, which is, I don't know what that says about me, but um, you know, I still get nervous. Uh, I crashed into you when you were trying to sit down. Like, um, it's it's always a little bit scary, but um, it gets easier to talk about it, especially um, beautiful responses, in particular from the MRKH community, a lot of whom which are here tonight, who have gone for various places. Um, so that keeps me going. Um, you know, there, there's that sort of idea that um, shame doesn't survive in the light of day. Um, and I think that's true. I think uh, the most freeing thing that any of us can do is to take the scariest truth about ourselves and um, share it with someone. And you don't have to make a movie, but just say it out loud. <laughs> um, but I'm really glad you did. <laughs> okay, Maddie, I have a question for you. What was the moment that you knew you had to do this project? Honestly, after I read it, uh, I was given the script and a mood board. And as soon as I read it and saw the mood board, I was like, I have to do whatever. I thought I would have to audition because I typically do audition for everything I did. And then I was told I could go meet Molly. So we went and got coffee. And she told me that as soon as I showed up, I like, my hair was wet and I had untied shoes and she was like, oh, she's Lindy. She, so. also, <laughs> she also ordered like a cookie, which I found so endearing and not what you'd expect from. And also, I, you were treating me to coffee and I, I, the coffee was so bad. And I felt so like, it's one of those moments where you're like, just, just, just get it down, you know, sort of thing. Um, no, but I, um, once I met Molly, I, it kind of, she just won my heart over. I, I absolutely was going to do anything I could to do this film, and she was so vulnerable with me, and um, so trusting that she would even, I don't know, give me the opportunity to tell such a brilliant story, and she ended up writing me, like, the most thoughtful, beautiful letter after we met, asking me to be Lindy, and it was just kind of history from there. That's really yeah. beautiful. I. I love that you showed up to a meeting with wet hair. It was like damp, like yeah. It, it wasn't that's like how I, that's how I roll. No, I. Yeah. This is how I spend my life, and I now feel validated. <laughs> yeah, but I were I heard from someone that maybe you thought that. Oh, I, oh let's no. get let no. Let's get into it. Let's let's get dark. Okay, let's get the goss. Okay. Emily Hampshire, who plays my mom, she in this film, she said that some something around the lines of like maybe you saw my Instagram or something and thought that maybe I was very like 
put together. Yeah, I thought, <laughs> well, um, I have to thank um, Pierre Elliott at WME for giving me a call and said, have you thought about Maddie Ziegler? And I was like, she's too beautiful. Like, she's too, like, I wish I looked like Maddie Ziegler in high school. And I said to the cast, like, you know, this is my movie. So I, I make everybody, like, look the way they do. But um, I, I um, you know, it's Instagram versus reality. Instagram is fake. Um, not that it, you, it, she has a beautiful Instagram feed and I love all of her photos. Um, but like, no, you saw like the real, yeah. Like, you know, um, what, what we see there isn't necessarily who a person is. Um, and I, you know, obviously in person, you're just as beautiful. Um, but even just more so as a person. This is really beautiful. You guys write letters to each other. You get coffee and cookies. Okay, I, I want to open it up to the crowd because I, I know there's a lot of people from Beautiful You here. And woo! Woo -woo! Uh, so I, let's do this by raising your hand. Um, and if you have a question, and I'll, I'll like do a cool point at you. Um, so first hand up, here we go. Can you say who you are? I'm Amy Lossie from the Beautiful You, Mark H. Foundation. Oh, Amy from Beautiful You. Seeing a story that could be any of us on film, on screen, um, means more to me than I could ever imagine. And when I was your age, Maddie's age, um, I just couldn't imagine the present. I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, beautiful. Just in case anyone in the back can't hear, I, I will repeat everything, but that was a really beautiful thank you, and now I'm going to cry into my mic. Um, take another question. Dead center. Yes, you, stand. Uh, I didn't know I'd be standing. Uh, thank you, Ari. And uh, I have a personal and a professional question for both of them. What was the most scary thing uh, starting the movie, and what's been the most gratifying thing Okay, what was the most scary thing and the most gratifying thing since it's been released? Yeah, I think the scariest thing was obviously just doing Molly justice and um, trying to also, I guess, just be as authentic for you and for the MRK community. I, like you said, like this is the first of its kind and I'm so lucky that I was able to be a part of something so special and so educational and something that now you guys have feel like you have a place to go and a reference point and that was definitely like the scariest part. I just wanted to make sure I was obviously being as accurate as possible and and as genuine as possible. But as soon as I got to set, like it was the most safe, incredible open set and like every day, even on the hardest scenes, like I feel like I don't know, it was just a really, uh, the most gratifying part. Probably just seeing the response. It's scary, you just don't, you never know, and this is my first film that I've been in every frame, and you just never know how that's gonna go. Um, but um, getting to talk to people from the MRK community has been like the most emotional, rewarding thing, and Every day I'm like so grateful that I said yes to this project. It's been the most rewarding thing and I just feel so lucky to be here. Like it's been um, a dream come true and Molly's changed my life so much. Like not just professionally but personally she really has and has opened my eyes up to so much and has been the best friend and so caring and amazing. And I think you're a brilliant writer and director so. <laughs> and she provided me with Dairy Queen every day, so yeah. for that reason, yeah, she's the one. But yeah. I, I think you should answer as yeah. well. Um, scariest thing is this: it's sitting in a room with people, a lot of whom which I know, a lot of whom which I don't. Um, I, to make a second feature uh, is challenging because people are kind of looking at you more critically as a filmmaker and, and just to do something so personal felt uh, very risky for me but if it isn't scary I don't want to do it um, and most gratifying is uh, this gal right here and um, yeah I see some MRKH pieces and um, 
this is up there for me, and I will say, um, Jacqueline, sorry to put you on the spot, but um, Jacqueline Mesh is here, and she is the first person that um, that I saw who was in the public eye, um, Miss Michigan and Survivor, and used her platform to put MRKH on the community, and I'm so indebted to you and to your bravery and courage. Um, I really looked up to you a lot, so just seeing your face is, um, it's a uh, real full, full circle, and um, it's hard to not get emotional. Sorry for calling you out on the spot. <laughs> okay, we're gonna take another question. Um, you right there in the white shirt. Yes, you know, you can stand or sit. I, I realize I really enforced that, <laughs> and I'll be more relaxed about it going forward. <laughs> Okay, the question is, is there someone in the cast you really clicked with? And then, yikes, is there someone in the cast you did not click with? Oh, they're not here, so... <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, <laughs> I have a question for Maddie. Um, I would say I, I really clicked with everyone. I think I obviously had the most emotional connection to probably Emily Hampshire and to Juliet. Um, Juliet played Viv, and Emily played my mom. Uh... I think the mother-daughter relationship was, uh, I don't know, I think we fostered a really beautiful connection immediately off the jump, and Emily, like, I, I guess I can quote her, she's just said that she immediately felt protective over me, even before we started filming, so I think that made for, obviously, a really great dynamic between the two of us. Julia is incredible, I love her so much, we were just together yesterday, but, uh, She's so talented, and all of our scenes were so fun together, and we got to run track together, which was an experience. Um, and the second part of this question is very tricky. There wasn't anyone, I don't Is TMZ here tonight? Yeah, I know. Like, this, this weekly? Okay, Molly, Molly will drop the name. Pass the mic. I don't think he's here, but... <laughs> I'm so scared. No, you know I'm not. Okay, wait. <laughs> Maddie, you can you can whisper wait, it in my ear. Wait, I'll call with you later. Okay. I um. It was just okay. No. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think this is the right place to be talking about. But I will say I'm I'm good friends with Molly, and she did text me that it was Brad Pitt, and she had to cut him out of the movie. So straight to print, straight to print. But I I will say like in all seriousness, I I did get along with actually everyone on set, and there was except for clearly one person. <laughs> Oh, okay, that's fine. Uh, listen, it was Brad Pitt. We'll, we're gonna move on. <laughs> um, okay, another question uh, right here in the pink in the pink shirt. Uh, I just turned sixteen, and what is one of the hardest things you think about being a teenager nowadays? What a good question. It's she just turned sixteen. Um, um, what a cool year of life, and what is the hardest thing about being a teenager? It's really hard. Um, I, I mean, we all have very different experiences. I had an unusual experience because I was like working full time as a teenager. But I think um, I think just loving yourself is really the I think that's the hardest thing to do, and and not just like conforming to what you think is cool or what other people think is cool. I think um, I've definitely found myself doing that in the past growing up. It's like really hard to just fully be yourself to people that you want to feel accepted by but I think as long as like you're a good person and you're a good friend then like you should express yourself however you want. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, that was really beautiful. Okay, you there. Oh, I feel like... I, Molly? I, was, I don't... Oh. I, no, okay. next question. <laughs> um, my, my name is Marianne, the question is for you, Molly. Um, I have MRK. Um, and I just want to know if there was like a moment in making this film, writing it or seeing it, that like kind of like healed a little piece. Because I'll tell you right now, watching Dilation and like kind of remembering that bullshit was uh, both healing and sucked, <laughs> but like in a good way. So I just was curious if you kind of, I don't know, kind of did a little healing journey through creating it. Um. 
I want to give you a huge hug after. Um, okay. I'm scared to get up now because I feel like I'll kick something over, so I'm going to stay here. Um, I, when this movie got greenlit, it just sort of like happened so fast that I couldn't really catch up to what I was actually going to be doing. Um, and there was one scene, um, like, so it, it's like a close up on your face when you're just like figuring out the whole dilation hell or whatever <laughs> you, you described it as. Um, and we didn't have a lot of time to shoot it. And I just said to Maddie something like, I was like, oh my God, how do you even explain this horrible <laughs> thing? And I just said, I think I said something along the lines of like, think of the times you've pushed your body as far as you did or were frustrated with the limits of your body. And like, I think that was like the first take, like first or second take. And um, that moment felt very out of body for me because when I saw her performance, I realized this wasn't about me anymore. It's about her and it's her story and it's your story and it's our story. Like it's not mine anymore. And I think that was the most healing thing. It's really beautiful. Um, in the back, maybe in plaid? Um, if you feel, yeah, I say you, you're shorty, yeah, yeah. That's such a good question. Can everyone hear the questions, by the way? Yeah, okay, great. Um, uh, gosh, um, yeah, I will say I was really lucky to have a team of people, incredible producers and um, people who financed it, um, you know, Telefilm Canada, who really trusted my creative lead on this. Um, the title change, I think, um, is a great uh, decision ultimately to allow more people to potentially see it. And um, like robot algorithms are taking over our life and are gonna put it in a like horror section on some <laughs> platform and people will be mad and sending me angry emails. So, um, you know. And for anyone who doesn't know, it was originally Bloody Hell. Yeah. Yeah, and it became fitting in. Yeah, um, but you know, like I, I think I've said this before, like it, sometimes people change pronouns or they go by a different name and you just roll with that. It's the same person inside. This is the same movie inside. It, you know, it's all still there. It's just a title. I love that. Um, yes, right there. Uh, I'm 14 and I'm an actor and dancer. And first of all, I just want to say that you inspire me so much. And I just have a question. Do you have sort of like a routine or something that you do maybe before you go to set to get into character? Oh. <laughs> um, I think it's very situational depending on what I'm doing. I think this process was very different than anything I've ever done. And I, I think I was the most prepared for this out of anything I've ever done. With dancing, it's a little bit different because obviously, like, obviously I'm rehearsing that every day, but I like to kind of see what happens in the moment on stage, and I, I just kind of black out in a way, and I, I feel like something different happens, and that's kind of like the most beautiful part about it. But with this, I, um, I don't know, I, I was very heavily involved every second, and when I was coming home, I was learning my lines for the next day, and I felt like I was in, I was Lindy the entire time, and um, yeah, I think it was a lot to juggle. It's kind of a hard thing to answer just because um, I'm sure I'll always have different processes. But um, yeah, I think I think maybe something that I carry through everything is just to not put so much pressure on what I'm doing because ultimately like we will get there in the scene and we will end up having like a really good flow. And uh, that kind of is the magic of like doing multiple takes and finding new things about every scene. Well, there was like two takes per scene because it's an indie film. Which gets <laughs> but, yeah, but also, two takes are yeah. Fun. But I think in a way too, it's cool because as we're blocking the scenes, like I'm actually learning 
my lines more and like feeling it out. And I do think dance really helped me so much get into this, uh, get into like the film world just because I learned how to hold my body on camera and to hit my mark and to memorize things. So I think those two were very helpful. So I think you're on the right track that you do both. Awesome. Quick question. How many days did you shoot this in? Uh, 21. 21. 21 days. Oh. Do you hear the shock? You guys did it! <laughs> Um, okay, yes, you there, and, uh, yes, you. you do every time I go to set I go with a plan just to have it thrown out the window so I think the only the only truth I know is that you can never anticipate it um, what is gonna happen um, but something that really helped me on this has been directing TV um, even though it's different just being able to get through a really tough schedule um, for an indie film was really beneficial um, and just getting just feeling more confident as a director uh, in that I can prepare my goal is always to be in a space walking onto set where I'm able to look at the actors and see the performances because if you're not prepared you can't pay attention to what's happening to you and sometimes you can discover some really amazing things Kind of similar, I guess, for me, like I did all the preparation so that when I wasn't set, I allowed myself to like just let go. And I feel like I didn't do that in the past. And that's something that I now I'm going to carry with me through everything else. I feel like I actually allowed myself to fully let go in this performance. I, I didn't have any option. Like that was the only option, really. But I, for the first time, am like proud of what I accomplished because I had it was a first for me to be in every frame and to emote so many different things so I hope I mean Lindy as a character absolutely is like never I don't think is ever going to leave my body so I think I'll probably bring her through everything that I do yeah it's really beautiful I have the following question for you um we all know about your wonderful work with C and not only you know, the great video that came about, but all the emotional and psychological work you did while interacting with her. Do you think that the work that you did with Sia helped you mature enough to be able to portray a role like this? Mm -hmm. That is so complicated. Yeah, I think ultimately doing those music videos is what made me find my love for acting. Uh, I didn't have a plan to act. I, When I was younger, I all I wanted to do was dance and do Broadway, which is so interesting because I cannot sing. So, um, <laughs> so uh, I don't know what, where I was super um, confident there, but I, um, <laughs> I, um, yeah, I realized that I was actually doing a lot of uh, work behind the scenes, and I was actually like prepping these roles for all of the dance pieces that I was doing, and I, I didn't realize how much like internal work I was doing, um, for every step I had a thought behind it. And that's like what you do as an actor. And I didn't, I was kind of doing that before I even realized. And um, I had been doing some like self tapes and acting here and there, but never thought I could make it to what this is. So I'm, yeah, with my scraggly hair. And I, um, so yeah, I, that was kind of my process and I'm very lucky. Like I said, dance is actually like, I think the biggest reason why I found my love for acting. Wonderful. Um, yes, on the side there. Molly, thank you for doing the film. I have MRPH as well, diagnosed way back in 81. <laughs> and um, I, I don't know how all you young women deal with the social media aspect of it because, I mean, we didn't have cell phones growing up. So, for that, I'm really, really thankful. And I just applaud you for being a female director. And thank you both for doing the film. Thank you. Thank you so much. Very beautiful. Yes, you in the blue denim.
Um, from the bad coffee, wet hair, <laughs> cookie date, um, I find, I found her very sweet and soft-spoken, but there's this, like, ferociousness behind her that, I mean, if you see her, her dance, it's just like, yeah, I mean, this is a performer, um, and knowing that it's so difficult to convey the complexity and nuance of this condition, um, who better to do it than her as a dancer? She knows how to express so much emotion through her body. Um, and like, I have goosebumps. Like, it is just like, it's a gut soul thing. Um, it was in her eyes. Um, I think she's um, wise and mature and kind um, in a way that I just wish everyone knew. Like, so kind. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's the, the placid exterior and this like wild beast that jumps out, you know, that's there that I was like, that's my girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, you right there. Um, so I'm, I also have MRK and it's just interesting to see it on the big screen because some things are similar, but some things are very different um, I think for everybody. So I'm curious how much of this is autobiographical and then how much of it is aspirational and what you would hope would have been your experience. Mm. Uh, <laughs> well, looking like Maddie Ziegler. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, I actually, back to the social media thing, like I was diagnosed maybe older than I, <laughs> I don't know, I, I won't give away my age, but um, I had like a flip phone and a beeper, so there wasn't much info I could get on my beeper in New Jersey. Um, but uh, I, I do want to say that I appreciate um, acknowledging that it was different from your experience. This has been a tremendous gift and opportunity I have to make this film. It is also a lot of pressure to feel like you are speaking about something for everybody. And I think people kind of want me to be able to speak to everybody and um, I can't. I, this is only my perspective. I want other people to tell their story. Um, you know, the tone is very specific. Not everyone will respond, you know, maybe scared of that I'm making light of it. In no way, shape or form am I making light of this. It has been the deepest pain of my life, um, but humor is how I've coped. Um, and that's how I cope and other people cope in different ways. Um, and that is all valid. Like. I, I will be there to support you or any other person who wants to tell their story. Mm -hmm. the hat. You were talking earlier about how humor played a really important part of like, the moment of having that. Um, but for me, the two moments that like really hit were the vulnerable moment with the mom when she was sharing her story, and then at the very end with the doctor when she realized she had like choices in the, in the matter, and so I just, I want to thank you for that, and I was wondering what it seems for each of you um, were the most impactful, like that you mm -hmm. really forever. Um, thank you. I will try not to cry. Uh, yeah, um, the, my, <laughs> this is, the character is very loosely based on my mom, um, but she died from breast cancer when I was 21, so, uh, in, in a lot of ways, this movie is my amends to her. Um, I think pain causes people to be selfish and unable to see beyond what's happening. And um, that scene is very much based on a moment. My mom was gracious and kind and patient, and I was just sort of in it, in the depression of it. And she was she showed me her scar for the first time, and it was really shocking, but it was her way of saying, like, you you don't get a monopoly on pain in this world and i was like you bitch but <laughs> <laughs> you know moms are right the question was what scene impacted you most right i for me it was really interesting there were lots of those moments but not until the first time that i watched it the first and last scene being mirrored but with a completely <laughs> different mindset that's like my I think one of my favorite parts of the whole film. Um, and I, it actually like 
I was taken aback, which is so weird because I obviously was so deep in it and filmed it. But I, I guess just seeing it for the first time laid out was like really um, chilling for me. And just to see, like you said, she actually found that she can have her own choice on her body and she like reclaimed her power by the end. And I think it's just like the most beautiful um, arc that she has. And um, she, she realizes like, you know, that whole monologue of like, you can all cancel me and have your opinions, but at the end of the day, like, this is my body and I'm gonna choose to do what I want. And I also don't have to make a decision. Like, I'm just can live in the moment. And I think it's like so powerful. And I, I love that scene and it means so much to me. So yeah. Um, we'll take just a few more. Um, you there, sir, with your hand? Yes, you. Writing to the acting, bravo. I wanted to ask you, was there a point reading the script that you were like, this, like, that, that really drew you? Like, what, what was the point in reading the project that you were like, ah, I want to I wanna do that? Mm. Honestly, selfishly as an actor, I was like, I want to do everything in this film. <laughs> but I, because uh, it was the same thing, like, it was scary to me, but... I obviously want to do the scary things. Um, I think the monologue where I'm sitting in the grass with Juliet and it's the whole scene about not being able to be a mother, that scene was like, I, as an actor, you know, like depending on how it's written, like, you know, depending on the performance level, you can take it there, but like it was already on the page. Like I didn't have to do anything. Like it was already there for me, which is why I like love you so much because your writing is just just so incredible and there wasn't anything about it. It was perfectly done. And so I was lucky enough to just say the words and it came off in the way that it did. But that scene in particular, I was just like, I have to do that. I have to. It's like the most powerful thing and it's so vulnerable and so brave and I feel so lucky that I was the one that got to do it. So, yeah. <laughs> My name is Eliza Redwine and I love That's acting. Great name. Yeah. Oh, thank Eliza you. Redwine. Oh, thank Eliza you. Redwine is speaking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I'm yes, like, she is good. Stop because it makes me blush. Okay, I really love acting, and I just want to know what it took for you to get into character. Um, for example, Sydney Sweeney, she likes to make um, like books out of mm. her characters, mm. and I just want to know if you do anything similar. Mm. For everyone in the back, um, do you do anything specific to get into character? And fun fact, Sydney Sweeney makes books out of her character. <laughs> Didn't know that. <laughs> You better be making novellas over here. <laughs> Poems? I don't do that. Um, not yet, at least. I don't know. Um, I, my acting coach is here, Megan McNulty, and I, um, I, so I owe so much to her because I we did so much work. Uh, I like every single day we went we went through the entire script, so that took a few weeks to go through, but we literally broke down every single line. And I think... Yikes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but I, I mean, I was nervous. I've never, like I said, I, I've said it like a thousand times now, but I've never been in every scene. So I, I was like, I, I'm, I need to be over-prepared. And that way, then once I got to set, I was actually able to just let go and perform. Um, but yeah, I, I like to do that work with her and, and break down the character and it, it gives me so much freedom then once I feel like I'm I feel secure enough to then let loose um, but that's kind of my process I think also for this film in particular like I actually had like a real resource of like we had really person I won't share what it was but especially before the really intimate scenes like she would literally lead me up to that moment in real time and tell me everything that was going on and it just put me there instantly which i'm so grateful for because that's like so i don't know it's she had to relive it like literally watch me in real time reliving everything and we have a lot of like emotional cry hugs after scenes where we just <laughs> no no that was it i do just want to say we're talking about like beautiful uh like <laughs> 
heavy things, but that scene that I still find hard to watch with the gynecologist and the I changed my mind and all of that, that actor was so alarmed when he came onto that set. He had never been in a gynecologist's office and he was so rattled. He was like, oh my God, my wife has been going here every year, our whole marriage, and I had no idea that she does this in between like picking up our kids. He was so stressed out. Maddie has been shooting all day. She's exhausted. Like crying in front of yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. And like, you know, there, there's, you have like Spanx, like there's, you know, um, wardrobe and all of that involved. But he was so tentative and uncomfortable with what this character was doing. You just, you're lying, like in between takes, crying, wipes a single tear away, sits up and is like, this is way worse for you than it is for me. I'm good. And then was like, went back. And I was like, what a boss bitch this girl is. Like, she just is like, sir, let's just keep it rolling. I got to eat my Dairy Queen. Like, let's go. <laughs> All of the scenes with um, DeFaro, who played Adam, like we, I had to have a serious heart to heart with him because we had an intimacy coordinator, which is like the most great, great. I'm just so grateful we had that, but uh, it was just a very safe, like so much consent, and uh, he was so nervous to like. I remember we were blocking a scene, and he had to like touch my knee, and he would like put a finger on my knee, <laughs> and Molly's like but you're gonna actually do it, right? Like, like when we do the take, and then he was like, yeah. And then we got in the car and I was just like, it was just me and him and I was like, I feel really comfortable and I just need you to grab my knee. And, <laughs> and he did, it was great, but it was just, I'm very lucky because you don't always hear great stories about, I don't know, <laughs> cast members and, and, and I don't know, you just never Men know. on sets. Yeah, yeah but, like watching him, it's like so respectful. No, like, everyone yeah. was so respectful yeah. of me, and also everyone knew that I had such heavy work to do, and they were all just very, very gracious with me, and I'm very grateful to have had that. And you obviously, it's thanks to you, because you fostered such an incredible, like, safe set, so, yeah. Um. This is the bridesmaid scene that I always do in Q&As with the fighting over the microphone. Oh, oh. Um, so <laughs> wait again. Um, anyways. Uh, I lost my train of thought. Oh, the okay. We had a lot of like young guys in their twenties on the crew, and they I don't they just took a job, and I think like day one they were like, what? what's going on? Um, and they were the best dudes on the whole planet. I love them so much. But one day in between takes, um, I I guess they didn't know I was there, but I was in the bathroom. We we're shooting something in your bedroom, and they were throwing the dilators at each other, and I. <laughs> popped my head out and they were like oh my god we're so sorry like and it wasn't like it was just like one it was like they tossed it over or whatever and I I just started laughing and I was really actually grateful to like kind of diffuse it and it was like oh my god it's just a thing it's just a prop in a movie a prop in your life the power is kind of removed um but like I, they couldn't have been more like apologetic of like oh my god I, we are so sorry we respect you like you know um, <laughs> and how protective they were with maddie like these are guys in their 20s who like you know in between takes and people are talking and like looking at cat memes or whatever it'd be like bro maddie's got a big scene like just chill um so my my experience with like men also both on the cast and the crew was just like I, I, I'm feeling good a lot of, about a lot of the young men out there. Oh, that's awesome. I, I love that gy gynecologist actor story, and I just, a quick pitch that you shoot this film again with every man in America. Oh my God, no thank you. No way, I don't want a reproductive movie for a while, or ever, so. Yeah, fair, fair. Okay, last question, so only keep your hand up if you're like, I'm crushed. She's, she's really... Yes, right here, yes, okay, it's you. Hi, my name is Kristen and I have Emmer to H. I had a question for Molly, but real quick, Maddie, I wanted to tell you that as I got into the film watching, I know it was a movie and I know you're an actor, but I really believed you had Emmer to H. You did a really good job. It was really incredible. Um, Molly, I just was wondering, I heard you say in the beginning that the, the feedback from the Emmer to H community and the support that you got has been really helpful. But as you were doing this project, was there anything you were worried about from that community? Yeah. Um, I first of all, Amy, who who spoke first um, at Beautiful You and uh, Christina, like 
I, I sent them the script. Um, they were so involved in it. They had a relationship with Jacqueline. They were always checking in with me of like, do you want to talk about this? Like we helped Jacqueline sort of navigate some of this. The response has by and large been so incredible. And those are the ones I hold on to. There has been some terrible things said to me, um, really, really awful things um, that upset me a lot at first, but I'm realizing that those people have work to do on their own healing journey, and that's not my responsibility, and I try to respond um, as you would with someone who's in pain, um, but it's like I'm yeah, I'm sitting in a chair up here, but like, I'm a person and like, this is scary. And, um, so yeah, it, it's by and large been great, but it's also like, this, this is, this is hard. Like, okay, I make jokes and that's how I diffuse when I'm uncomfortable because this is far too exposing. Um, but the jokes are a facade. I'm a vulnerable, emotional person. <laughs> I just want to say thank you to everyone who's here tonight and thank you to you too. You truly created